a decade ago, a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before. Kitchen Stadium, a giant cooking arena. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. On a cuisine! To realize his dream, he started choosing the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Roksaburo Michiba. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from all over the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day. Using all their senses, skills, creativity, they're to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a Challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. Every battle, reputations are on the line in Kitchen Stadium, where master chefs pit their artistic creations against each other. What inspiration will today's challenger bring? And how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! If memory serves me right, I have never met a chef who has led as kaleidoscopic a life as Minoru Noda. Chef Minoru Noda is the head chef of Hanabishi, a members-only Japanese restaurant in Los Angeles's Little Tokyo. Noda is apparently a big fan of Iron Chef, watching every episode aired on the West Coast. He contacted me expressing his eagerness to challenge my Iron Chefs. Noda was born in 1936 in Los Angeles as a second-generation Japanese-American. His mother passed away six months after he was born, and he was sent to Japan to live with his grandparents. At age 18, Noda debuted as part of a stand-up comedy duo in Osaka, pairing up with the comedy legend Yasushi Okoyama. Yet again, ill fortune came calling when Noda had to return to the U.S. frequently for checkups related to military drafting. The duo was short-lived. Noda then made a career decision to commit himself to becoming a chef, despite being forced to fly back and forth between Japan and the U.S. At age 38, he finally made his dream come true and opened Hanabishi in Little Tokyo. World-renowned pro golfer Isao Aoki and former baseball great Tatsuro Hiroka are among the many celebrities that frequent his restaurant. Food should be more than just flavors, that's my belief. In the food he serves, I see a good man. He offers human warmth to us um, through his uh, food, I think. And I think that's the key to the success of his uh, restaurant, in my opinion. Let me introduce today's challenger once again, a Japanese chef of American nationality, Minoru Noda. To Noda, the Japanese culture is very special. The quality of his dishes goes to show the depth of his training that in some ways surpassed that of top chefs born, bred, and trained in Japan. Well, I was born in America, and I hold an American passport, but inside, I'm no different from a regular Japanese, uh, mentally, uh, that is. Uh, possible, I wish I were a chef in Japan. After all, as an individual, I'm Japanese, uh, you know. The American-born Japanese chef, to whom Japanese food is more than just a career, it is a passion. The only advice I would give him is to be himself um, without trying to be um, too fancy with um, whatever ingredients he may be given and draw out the natural flavors. If he can do that, we might see him topple the Iron Chef, <laughs> you know. So now, Noda, come show us your skills acquired in Japan and polished in the U.S. on the stage you've dreamed of competing on. You never know how your styles will be expressed in each dish before you do it. It's uh, not a matter of winning or losing. It's a battle against myself.
Right. Today's challenger has such an interesting story, it might make for a good movie. And our guest could play him in his early days. Actor Junichi Ishida, welcome. Well, nice to be here. And Ishida-san, you are familiar, right, with uh, what chefs prepare at the best restaurants? Yeah, I can't deny that. Uh, but let me just say that uh, I usually go to these restaurants by myself. Oh, standing out, not in the crowd. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And our commentator, Dr. Yukio Hattori. Doc? Always a pleasure. Okay, let's bring on Chairman Kaga. アメリカ国籍の板前以上に和食に情熱を注ぎ続けるアメリカ国籍の板前この新スタジアムの素材は彼にとっては夢の宝庫かもしれませんアメリカと日本を往復しながら磨いたその技を見せてもらおうではありませ
hard-boiled mushrooms, uh, okay. those orthodox dishes. Okay, and Doc, uh, what sort of things should we keep in mind as the men proceed? Well, first and foremost, the aroma is uh, most important, okay. so you've got to be careful not to harm that. And uh, you can see the middle-sized ones there, they're called uh, tsubomi, and as All far right. as the smell goes, those are the best. The ones that uh, haven't opened up completely. Right, as opposed to the uh, hiraki, the, the mature ones, because the, the spores leave, right, when they're, when they're mature, and that means most of the aroma is gone, but it doesn't mean smaller is better because Cordo, the smaller ones, okay. are kind of immature. Okay, well, so. chef spent a few minutes up there selecting the mushrooms they'll work with, and these are known as diamonds of the forest, and mm -hmm. looks like Noda's gone for more of the bigger ones. Right, yeah. Now yeah. here, look. <laughs> Some menu writing. <laughs> Challenger Noda starting out here looks to be, I guess, writing up his menu. Right, this is yeah. an important first step. Well, he definitely has been watching Iron Chef, watching Michi to write his menus in his battles. And now his notice calligraphy work here is a little too artistic for me to make all this stuff out. Yeah. Don't look my way. I, I can't make it out either. Wow, he is fast there. Okay, and there on the other side, Michiba, too. He's going to start in on his menu. Oh, okay, yes, good. Right out of the gate, got a calligraphy battle brewing here. Man, this is pretty intense. The two men writing their menus at the same time, first order of biz. You know, in a way, doing this puts pressure on the other side. I mean, if you have something first, the, the opponent can't have something similar. Right? right, right, right. Okay, we'll see if we can find out uh, what are the dishes they are planning to make. Can you read that? Challenger Nota, let's see there. Looks like he's got maybe four dishes there, but the writing, I, I honestly can't make it out, fellas. Sorry. Uh, tsukimi style steamed dish. You yeah, know, I got that one too. Yeah. Okay, and how would that one look like? Uh, well, that means viewing the moon, right? Using eggs? Probably, yeah, using a whole egg steamed like a, a moon in a dish. Okay, okay. from the floor, Shinichiro to go. Thank you. About the menu writing the Iron Chef and the Challenger are doing earlier before the battle, Challenger Nota told us that he didn't agree with Iron Chef Michiba doing his menu writing at the end. He said that's not the way we do things in Japanese cooking. He's deviating too much from authentic rules, but now that Michiba-san is writing the menu in the beginning, I'll have to ask the challenger if he's satisfied or if he has any other bones to pick. Well, we'll have to see what Michiba says there. You got a little chuckle out of it. The chef who lives, works more than 5,000 miles from here, taking a dig at Michiba. That's not Japanese food. Deviating? What do you think? He's more Japanese than us Japanese. Well, the Iron Chef heard the report he noticed, but he's moving ahead with his menu and looks like he's right. done with it. A lot of dishes yeah, there. Five, six. Six, I think. Well, that's my count right there. Okay. Iron Chef Michiba planning to go with the sextet of dishes revolving around Matsutake mushrooms. Kusan, yes. I asked Challenger Noda how he feels after that long flight to Japan because he just landed yesterday and wow. he said, I'm not doing too well. I haven't slept for the last 30 hours. This is the worst jet lag I've ever had. Oh my goodness. Well, it's unfortunate the schedule working out this way. He did tell us he was able to nap for a couple of hours before we started, but he also said jet lag would be no excuse, and now Michiba here. Oh, the tilefish, okay. uh, the kind of snapper. Amadai? Yeah, uh, red tilefish. Okay, mm. and Sea Chef steamed this one a lot. Uh, what's your guess? Um, you're getting pretty good at this, you know. I think it will be steamed, to be honest. Now, okay. check out Michiba over here. All right. He's cleaning the matsutake mushrooms, right? And you only wipe the surface gently with a dampened cloth, just oh, like he's doing it. now. Yeah. Huh. If you rinse it in water, you lose all the aroma. All right. Huh. And the most important rule with the mushroom is to do it that way. Yeah. So if you ever get a chance to use the expensive ones, never, ever dip them in Don't water. Don't give them a bath. Don't uh -huh. even let them touch the water. Mm -hmm. And if we're going that far, only oh, chop from the end of the stem okay. as well. Okay. Okay. And this is a good one right here. Uh, Size-wise, I'd say tsubomi. Okay. Got, yeah. But this is on the challenger side to here. Oh, okay. well, well, some here. greens. You that? can see in the bowl right there. Kusan, yes. Let me give you the ingredients in this bowl on the challenger side. This is a mix of trefoils, matsutake, and eggs so far. All right. Mm. Thanks, Ota. Challenger Noda, a chef who works out a little Tokyo in Los Angeles. He's also able to watch Iron Chef there, and our show has kind of caught on with the, in some of the West Coast cities. There's a Nomo Mania in L.A. with the Dodger pitcher, Hideo Nomo, and maybe if he wins today, there'll be some Noda Mania sweeping <laughs> little Tokyo. They could even come up with the song for him, like they've got one for Nomo. Sure, well, defeating an Iron Chef is like an American dream. You know? Yes. Challenger Noda says he's going to return to the basics of Japanese cuisine, and he won't be beaten when it comes to making his sauce which sounds kind of contradictory. Japanese cuisine and sauce? Well, uh, I don't think he means sauce in a Western cuisine sense. Rather, broth and seasoning in Japanese cuisine. Well, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure, but probably. And you know. Yes. Yeah, about the theme ingredient, matsutake mushrooms, Iron Chef Michiba was mumbling, no good, no good, and shaking his head, but I'm not exactly sure what he was referring to. Oh, what's that all about? So good. Okay. Maybe not the best quality in his book.
maybe they couldn't uh, get the best ones this time around, huh? Well, they'll have to make do. <laughs> the Iron Chef coming into this battle, though, with a record of 27 and 4. Well, this time of year, the good, genuine matsake mostly come from Hokkaido, right? The Northern oh, Islands. Uh -huh. So, right. truthfully speaking, bigger ones that we got here are from Korea. Oh, okay. Well, that explains yeah. it then. But as far as prices go, uh, our chairman was not lying about that. Okay, but he could tell that they weren't of the uh, domestic variety, not passing his smell test. Yeah, and that's a little bit intimidating to I, see a man I'm be able to do that. I'm from Hiroshima, which is famous for its matsutake, but uh, I couldn't tell you these were imported. <laughs> I just thought they were all of the domestic, homegrown variety. I'm from Hiroshima, which is famous for its matsutake mushrooms, but I couldn't tell you these were important. <laughs> I just thought they were all of the uh, domestic, homegrown variety. Fukusan. Yes. And we just got word that on the Iron Chef site, and you may have noticed already, he has some okaki Japanese rice crackers ready for something. All right. Here they thank are. You. Okay. okay. I'm going to use those. Especially with matsutake. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just a, a snack for the chefs, you think? Or... <laughs> well, you might want to break them up, crush them, and use them for something. Uh -huh. You know, I, I think you're probably right. Uh, crush it, mix it into a batter, I think would be the way to go. Okay. Yeah. Now, here we go okay. packing matsutake now what is this piling matsutake onto that tile fish oh, yeah. well look look at the volume and of uh, give it a fold over and sandwich them he could and mm -hmm. yep tile right there. fish is in season right now am i right 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 good call yeah and this sandwiching technique is called ikomi in japanese oh. all right oh. and that's a one of a kind there the one to the left. Okay, and now here on the challenger like, side, yes. Is that avocado? It is avocado, yeah. Well, now that's okay. a California taste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, now the Iron Chef pl placing that one oh, on the kombu kelp. Oh, the whole thing, yeah? With okay. matsutake filling up the inside, nice. and look at that. Kelp flavor as well. And wow. to be steamed and all mm -hmm. of it. Matsutake, too, inside. Right, yeah. Making for a softer texture. Right, yeah. And then perhaps slice off sections for that's serving. Part, we don't know yet. We'll okay, go to the steamer there. Yeah, oh, yeah. And Put that puppy in, yes. In case you were still wondering about the uh, Japanese rice crackers on the Iron Chef side, you were right. They are starting to crush them. Okay. Okay, crush them. So, like I said before, probably for texture okay. and a batter. Batter or coating. And Fukuzan, this is what they look like now. Okay, the rice crackers have been crushed, looking similar to bread crumbs. And now, back to the challenger side. Now, the challenger side, this is... Okay, that's oh, going in the steamer. Oh, I see. He's he's trying to steam each one of them basically as he goes. Kind of a one-by-one -one basis here. Now, these look very, very good. All right, yeah. challenger Noda here with... Fukuzan. One, yes. In this dish, he's combined the trefoils, eggs, and matsutake with crab meat and light soy sauce. All right, and that assortment all combined looking great. Okay, let's flip to the Iron Chef over here. He's got some uh, kunoko. Uh, well, actually, some call it kuchiko. Okay, this, sorry, this is kuchiko right here. Okay, and this is for a rice dish, right? That goes amazingly well with rice. Okay, don't know yet if either of the chefs have gotten started on making rice or if they're planning to have rice. We'll have to see if we can get word on that. Right, and now if you look at Michiba-san here, he's going to use this for a batter. I Okay, frying, breadcrumb right? style rice crackers. Yeah. <laughs> I think that'll work to describe it. Um, it'll work, yeah. Okay, see this? Uh -huh. Yeah. Matsake, it's a great as a tempura, yeah. Right. Tempura of this type of mushroom is simply wonderful. Yeah, and the rice crackers will add a little bit of saltiness to it. Very nice touch here. I okay, see. so some saltiness imparted to it by uh, breading it with rice cracker crumbs. Right, right. And now I think if we can go over to the challenger, yeah, here we go with the, the red snapper. I think he's got Not there. tilefish or red snapper? Yeah, it's snapper. Okay, right. filleted pieces there. And the grilled item in a foil. Okay, uh, that it could be. Okay, cook red snapper and matsutake in some foil. We might do that. Yeah, I think the idea of that would be to kind of encapsulate the aroma and keep it inside. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, in principle, actually, their approaches are quite similar here, aren't they? And this is very similar to Michiba's sandwiching the mushrooms in the Locking in the aroma. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, now what's the Iron Chef got here? Uh, yes. Crab meat? Here, the Iron Chef has, is mixing bacon and beaten prawns. All right, thanks, oh, big okay. fella. Mashed oh. prawns. Oh, smash, bro. Hey, that's a nice match. Okay, putting bacon in there, too, kind of incorporates his American side. <laughs> yeah, I was think, thinking along those lines, too. Well, this is what I meant when I, when I said they were writing a menu. I mean, you put pressure on the other guy. Put the yeah. squeeze on. <laughs> sure, you can steal an important ingredient from the other side. All right, so this one would go in the oven, then? Uh, steaming. Steam it? Uh, no, no, no. Grill, pan fry. Definitely not steaming. All right, oven or fry, I, then, I think, in aluminum foil. I think grilling would be the way to go on this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, I tell you, charbroiled matsutake with the soy and vinegar. Dip, it is out of this world. Mm. Simple, <laughs> yet so profound. Yeah, now look at the Iron Shepherd. He's got the prawns handy, oh. right? Uh -huh. And he's sandwiching them, right? Okay, and this one's got the bacon in it. Right, bacon as well. He'll probably just use toothpicks to keep them closed, right? And just roll them up. If he's going to fry them. Right, right, yeah. And like the bread for a sandwich. Sandwich? <laughs> That's kind of a weird name. <laughs> it seems
seems kind of cheap and mundane for this type of ingredient. <laughs> I guess at four grand, yeah. <laughs> now back to the challenger side. Think he's I? making chawan mushi, yeah. The mixture he's pouring over this dish is eggs, broth, and light soy sauce. Oh, okay, so this is the steamed one, right? The uh, zucchini style. With the eggs representing the moon. Right, okay, so I guess we were right all the way along here. Okay, so he had first one, then the eggs inside, and then mixed right. it. Right. Huh. went? Okay. okay. And it's, it was all poured over top. And that one, wow, looking to these eyes, is fine. Okay. Yes. Each chef is taking a totally different approach to their rice. Challenger Noda says that he has no plans to use rice at all, while Iron Chef has his rice cooker going all red. All right, Michiba will have rice for use in one of his dishes, while a little right. surprise on the other side, Noda opting to pass on making rice. Okay. Okay. Well, I like Challenger Note's seriousness. But he's so focused Despite right now. the jet lag. Uh, I like it when people are like that. He's oblivious to everything except his cooking. Right. And I can feel his aura as an artist. You know? Hey. <laughs> oh, Uni. Yes, okay. singer urchin row put on top of the matsutake there. That's nice. a, a going into the aluminum foil one. Okay. You know, I, I just hope that the matsutake mushrooms don't get overpowered by the uni. Oh, yeah, you know? that's yeah, true. Right, that's uni true. can end up doing that. Well, he didn't season the mushrooms in any way. No, they're just as is. Mm -hmm. It's right exactly okay, as they were. Okay, so. using them just in their natural state right there with mm -hmm. some partners. Perhaps doing it in the foil? Something along those lines, yeah, like in in the foil or something to, again, get the aroma has got to be the key for that one. Okay. And they've, they've got them on a plate, I see, so I'm guessing just a, a simple grill. All right, and you just heard it seconds ago, crossing the halfway point, 30 minutes gone, 30 to go, yes. Here's what the Challenger has wrapped in foil. Red snapper, matsutake mushrooms, yuzu, citrus fruit, and sea urchin. Oh, okay. Yuzu also. So, so, and pouring avocados onto this then? And adding a West Coast or California flavor okay. to that one. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. that. There we go. Oh, oh, it looks like they'll do it afterwards, right? Okay, right. Yeah. He was telling his assistants to do that. Yeah, okay. so once they've been cooked, then the avocado will, the spread will be laid on and it's going into the oven right there. Okay, and you can see uh, Iron Chef, he's got his grilled okay, item there on, on the big old up, beef. But uh, what's, what is this? Uh, that would be the sandwich yes, one, right? The, the matsutake sandwich. <laughs> steam, steam this one then? Well, normally. But Inside the leaf? That's what the leaf is for, I imagine. Of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the leaf's still green, though. Well, you know? I've seen the brown ones used when they want to cook similar right. items in the oven or char broil them. You know, I'm really not sure. This is a tough one. Is going to steam it? These, these leaves aren't dried. No, I see The that. dried brown ones are often used for oven or barbecue right. duty. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I've never seen a fresh one like this. Well, maybe you're going to eat the leaf, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if we're, we've got a choice of steaming or grilling, I'm going to go okay. grilling. Okay, we'll that's, see. That's oh, and he's doing something. Okay, oh, he's going to grill it later. Okay, maybe right at the end or just before they're served? Probably just for serving, yeah. Oh, while before. serving something else, maybe? Perhaps, we shall see. Now back to the challenger side. Looks to be making some soup stock there. Yes, he is from chicken. Pretty healthy amount right there in the deep pot. All right, so this would be the American version of the broth of vigor. Okay, a chicken broth <laughs> and now adding carrots and... Uh, what was the white stuff in there? Maybe some yam potatoes or taro. Can't tell yet, but they're going to be cooked up there. Yes. You're right. The ingredients in this pot, the challenger has just added boiled carrots and daikon radish to chicken stock. Back to you. Okay, okay. the white piece is daikon. All right. And now now here, the Iron Chef steamed tilefish stuffed with matsutake, bringing that one out for their first oh, look-see of that. Oh, look at that. Whoa. <laughs> wow, a mass of matsutake stuffed in the belly of this one. And he's going to serve it just like this, I guess. Yeah. So dynamic and expensive. Mm. Hey, you are living on the high hog today, Shida-san. Happy guy. Matsutake spilling out from the belly of the beast. The tilefish offering flavored with kelp broth as well. A masterful mm. job here being done by Michiba. Simply amazing. Yeah. Now back to the challenger here. And this, uh, okay, what is this? Yes. Now I'm told this is burdock. Okay. Oh, okay. Burdock. Yanagawa right. style stew, maybe. Right. Right. Yeah. Now I see. Yep. Some beaten eggs on the surface a little bit later okay, on. Okay. And that would be a treat. Yeah. yeah. Hang on. Shark fin. Oh, what? Are they shark fins there? It's looking like a Chinese dish all of a sudden. What? <laughs> well, how about a challenger note of getting a hold of and using all the luxurious goodies he can Whoa. see oh, here, stocked in Kitchen <laughs> Stadium. Normally tough for him to find many of these things in L.A., and he's got run of the mill today. You know, and now look at the Iron Chef. He's got something really unique happening here. What is here. this here? Um, it's, this is like a Horoku earthen pot, right? And there's okay. clams. Japanese there. clams, yeah. not the smallest short-necked ones, right. but uh, hamaguri. Usually you have stones at the bottom, right? Yeah, and I think he could be using the clams instead of the stones. Exactly. Okay, so situation substitution by the Iron Chef. <laughs> so he's, he's using the idea of uh, Horoku grilling with a layer of heated stones cooking whatever's on top. But Great Iron Chef wow. call there. Wow. Very, very creative. And it means the these clams have already been cooked. That's uh, what that would mean, yeah. I, I suppose that's true, yeah. But they yeah. haven't opened up yet. I 
think they will be open very, very soon in a minute or so. That's such okay. a fun way of cooking. <laughs> All right. Kusan, yes. About the dish using clams as a bed, Michiba-san says he won't start to cook that one until just before serving so as not to kill the aroma of the matsutake back to you. All right. Keeping in mind the essential aspect of matsutake, the aroma now here. Wow. Ooh. Look oh, at that one, huh? That is so pretty. This is something. Well, in the... Uh, teaching of yin and yang, the five elements of life are represented by five colors, right? Right. And so it's all about everything in the universe, including food. Okay. The making of the universe. And all aboard a single plate by the Iron Chef. And now back this way, challenge you know to ten minutes left, matsutake and shark's mm -hmm. fin. Yeah. And some asparagus. Right, yeah. There's a triple play for you and uh, perhaps a wrap job. I don't know, possible fry job for that matter. Well, you know, uh -huh. it's got Japanese, uh -huh. Chinese, and Western ingredients. Yeah. But uh, you think of it, they should work out nicely. That's true, yeah. Michiba-san has his yin-yang creation, while the challenger has... Uh, Japanese, Western, Chinese. All over the culinary <laughs> map, yes. You remember that the challenger wanted to get back to basics and authentic Japanese food, but now he's changed his tune, shouting, I've got no time for that, I've got to ad-lib from this point on, so much for my soul-searching good intentions. Ooh. <laughs> I can relate to that. Now, hang on here. Have I got the Nothing Iron Chef using China. butter over here? Butter? Can we get a shot? With what? matsutake? I'm surprised. Oh, I mean, that's very good, as you know, mushrooms and butter. It's a very nice combination. Okay, okay. I, yeah, come to think of it, I guess we have had that match before. Sure, even uh, like a sautéed dish is good. That oh, okay, one. now, course, yeah. uh, what's the story with the Iron Chef's rice? It's been a while since we first heard word about that, and uh, the mm. Kuchiko? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, now this one, I think, Noda on his last dish. That's the Yanagawa-style stew, Probably the right? last one he could Kukusan? bring in, yes. About the rice on the Iron Chef's side, I'm not sure about the Kuchiko yet, I'll have to get back to you on that, but later on, I've just been told that the rice will be combined with clam soup in some way back to you. Okay, thanks. And you see him muscling up there. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. so clam soup. That's, I mean, so on the science side, it okay. makes sense, but... Well, you saw a shot of the rice. Now, here's notice side, the stewed one, out of the pan, into the bowls, mm -hmm. and yeah. still on his side and swinging over to the steamer there. Right, the uh, skimmy-style dish. And, oh, another egg on there. So he's used eggs in three layers. Here. Right, and that top one there, uh, representing the moon. Wow. Uh, and, and is that a, like an egg, like a sauce? Man has been... Breaking and using a lot of eggs today for its matsutake dishes. The egg yolk on top of the skinny style dish. Mm -hmm. three Challenger Nota now, go. three minutes left. Reality setting in the time limit, forcing him to pull back and get him done. Now, where did the Yuba rolls okay, go to? Okay, right there, pan oh, and ham, okay, but it's getting go. late. Okay, I see. He's going to fry them. Will he have enough time to get them done? Oh, I mean, yeah. we're, we're down to a little more than two and a half minutes on the clock. Oh, uh, should be okay. Sure, why not? Yeah. All right, and in they go. Okay. Hit the oil cooking, and they'll be hot for the tasters. Right, yep. Yeah, I see it there. Deep fried Yuba rolls with matsutake and asparagus inside, and there goes another one, yeah. and now a third. Third. You know, you can't just serve them as is, though, in a big roll. You'll have to have some time to slice have these Have to get up, that right? job done, yeah. too. And now Michiba getting the charcoal position. Guess that means the tasters are going to take them hot off the grill, the leaf-wrapped offering. That mm. was looking so nice. A total dining area. Whoa, look at that <laughs> right there. <laughs> how, we're down to how many minutes now? Flamola, a little over a minute left, and Noda busting it to the end. His Yuba rolls are done. Okay, and he had time to slice them. Yes, Ooh, job yeah. complete, and even dressed up some. One minute And now go. a minute left. The final 60 seconds to try and get his dishes Kusan, done. Yes. My final question to the challenger was, are you going to make it? And in a real panic, he replied, yeah, yeah, I think I am okay. <laughs> well, he's got to make hay. Taste test there. Apparently likes that. Now moving on to another task. On the other side, Iron Chef slowing it down, coming in on cruise control. Doing everything in one hour must be really tough. I mean, especially when you've never done it before. Well, that's what they all say. You can game plan all you want, but when you're in the thick of it, trying to finish in 60 minutes, it can overwhelm even the most talented and experienced of chefs. And that's where being battle-tested like Michiba is can make all the difference in the world. Iron Chef once again under control the whole way. Challenge to notice come a long way from across the Pacific, from little Tokyo in Los Angeles to big Tokyo to in Japan. Been watching Iron Chef on TV over there. But today, over here, Five competing seconds. and trying to win Four in Kitchen three. Stadium. We'll see how it goes. Final seconds Nine. ticking down, and that's it. The cooking's done. The Matsutake battle is over. You were really in a panic towards the end of that hour, weren't you? Well, at first I thought it would be one hour enough, but you know, uh, 
The seasonings are so different. Oh, really? From what uh, I'm used to. Yeah, the seasonings are difficult to use, too. Uh huh? I mean, they're all piled up on big plates instead of being in individual shakers. And uh huh? Because they aren't in shakers, it took a lot of time going yeah. back and forth. I had to use spoons, and, and you have to wash the spoons each time. Uh, it, it, it took a lot of time. So you didn't finish the soup? Right. Yeah, I was planning to do one more dish. Yeah? I wanted to, but the uh, jet lag really got to me. Hit me hard. <laughs> my taste buds are like numb. Huh. Really? I feel like my tongue is half the length of what it used to be. <laughs> so, how'd the hour go? Well, um, today's theme was matsutake mushrooms, and right, it's an uh -huh. ingredient you don't want to do too much to, to well, to maintain the wonderful um, aroma, okay. you know? So, I kept things uh, very simple, huh. and because of that, I was able to finish yeah. uh, things earlier than I had uh, planned. Great. Yeah. And that's why you felt you could do the menu writing in the beginning this time instead uh, of the... Yeah. As a rule of thumb, uh, menu writing has to be done always in the beginning. Uh -huh. I like like I did uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> so from now on it's decided then? I don't know about that. It uh, <laughs> no? depends on how controlled I am. <laughs> okay. Challenger Nota is offering five dishes. First, matsutake and celery salad taking the aroma of matsutake and enhancing it by the use of Japanese pepper. The celery adds an interesting textural component to the experience. Matsutake and yuba rolls. The soft texture of yuba bean curd sheets highlights the firmness of the matsutake. The sauce made from tofu and sea urchin is a good match with the diamond of the pine forest. Third, matsutake chawanmushi. Multiple layers of the flavor of eggs do not overpower the matsutake at all. Instead, they harness the balance between the mushrooms and the other ingredients. Fourth, snapper and matsutake with avocado sauce. The sweetness of sea urchin roe atop the red snapper and matsutake achieves a magnificent union with the avocados, a unique Japanese dish with an American touch. Last is matsutake and yanagawa style stew finished with a touch of citrus flavor. The combination of the textures of matsutake and burdock are known as reminders of the warmth of home cooking. Iron Chef Michiba is offering six dishes. First, matsutake, sashimi style, a simple and well-balanced appetizer with visual appeal as well. The aroma, accentuated by citrus juice, harkens to the origins of Japanese food. Matsutake soup, straight ahead, but what complexity the taste thanks to the perfectly prepared broth and the luxurious mushrooms flavor. Matsutake and prawns grilled in leaves. Michiba sandwiched the ground prawn meat with bits of bacon between slices of matsutake. The aroma of the matsutake is well maintained, while the flavors of all the items achieve a marvelous harmony tied together by a gently flavored dipping sauce. Fourth dish in the lineup, fried matsutake with mayonnaise dip. The mushrooms were battered and breaded with crushed rice crackers before being deep fried. The crispy finish is what accentuates the texture of the matsutake. The basic but fine-tuned mayonnaise-based sauce should also find favor with its flavor. Fifth, matsutake steamed in tilefish. Matsutake mushrooms stuffed in the belly of a tilefish. The juice and subsequently the flavor of the fish have penetrated into the mushrooms while they've maintained their firm texture. The tilefish is also enjoyed in the soy, citrus, and vinegar sauce. And to round out the meal, sautéed matsutake and clams, cooked over a bed of clams in a horoku-style earthenware pot. The natural flavor of the clams and the butter boost the matsutake's profile. The soup from the dish will be poured into the bowl of rice. Hanabishi Restaurant, a setting that looks like it could be in Tokyo. Well, it is. Little Tokyo in Los Angeles. And it's the restaurant of this man, today's challenger, Minoru Noda. He's been watching Iron Chef. Now he'll appear on it in a battle against Iron Chef Japanese Roksaburo Michiba. Chairman Kaga unveils the theme, luxurious in season, 4,000 bucks worth of matsutake mushrooms. And Challenger Nota, jet lag, time constrained, still delivers a fine looking set of five. Iron Chef Michiba, menu first, cooking second, comes in with the set of six. And now the moment of truth, tasting and judgment. On the panel today for the Matsutake battle are actor Junichi Ishida, actress Mayuko Takata, and culinary critic Osako Kishi. First, the dishes of Challenger Nota. The batter is quite tasty. 
Mm, quite elegant, I'd say. The celery and also the matsutake are both raw. Yes. Right. Yes. The crispy texture of the celery, well, mm, adds variety, a nice twist to the overall experience. Thank you. All of the ingredients are sliced in uh, such a bold way. It's very wild. I'm actually having fun eating this. Discovering what's in it is, is just a lot of fun for me. This is quite interesting, but you didn't have enough time, and the yuba should have been fried a bit more. Yes, I wanted the crispiness, you see, you but... You uh, yes. more time for this. I was quite surprised with his dishes. The way this dish... Um, how do you say this? Um, the way he used yes. asparagus. It's a Japanese food, but he had something extra that makes it... Well, makes us think that this may not be Japanese food. Well, I mean, that's just what I think about this, but I think it was good. If, if the sea urchin were raw, it might have been overpowering, or too creamy, almost, perhaps. Uh, but you used a torch to char the surface at the end, and that helped make this just, well, it made it just perfect to eat. I really liked it. Avocados always remind me of um, America for some reason. I thought that the avocados and the sea urchin together would be too heavy in terms of flavor, you know. But, I mean, it could kill the matsutake's aroma. But I was wrong. The soft elements like the avocado and the, the sea urchin actually help to accentuate the texture of the, the mushroom itself. Thank you. The matsutake is overpowered by the burdocks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Too bad, but the overall flavor is very good. You now live in Southern California, and that's your stage as a chef, as a Japanese chef. I, uh, I really enjoyed the uniqueness of the flavors and the techniques that come with your food. And now up the dishes of Iron Chef Michiba. The second this dish was placed before me, I was hooked on the aroma. The, the fragrance of the citrus and the matsutake was just so wonderful. I just devoured all the matsutake first, and now I'm, I'm ready to go for the snapper. This is very Japanese. First, the play on words suggesting longevity, right? <laughs> I was very impressed with the way you packaged this as a Japanese, Japanese-style dish. Oh, I just love the smell. I'm in heaven today. <laughs> really. First I tried it with broth only, and then later added some citrus juice, which changed the flavor. This is a very nice articulation of matsutake. All right, now we'll find out about the matsutake grilled inside a leaf. Matsutake is, of course, totally fat-free, but the fat bits from the bacon added into this gives it Extra flavor, um, more tastiness from the fat. It's very, very delicious. It somehow smells like a, a bonfire. It's really delightful to eat. I thought at first the mustake was sweet, but now I know it's the sweetness of prawns absorbed by the mushrooms. And the citrus and soy sauce dip, it's perfect. And now the sautéed matsutake and clams with soup for the tasters to pour on their rice. Can I pour it first? Yes, uh, please, uh, go ahead. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. <laughs> really, it is. I mean, this changed my perception of this mushroom completely. This is so dynamic. Right. This is best when eaten together with rice, I think. It's really good. <laughs> it's like another round after a full-course meal. This is really great. It's wonderful. Matsutake, Diamonds of the Forest. We'll be back. Find out who shines today.
愛し続けてきた日本で一世一代の勝負をかけた今日の挑戦者その料理を味わってある言葉が頭に浮かびました料理人の本当の国籍はその料理の中に潜んでいるそれでは発表します Today's battle, more than just a culinary clash, giving us pause to consider culture, nationality, and the meaning of food in our lives. Challenger Noda, a unique background and vantage point for Japanese cuisine. Perhaps he sees more in what we take for granted. Iron Chef Michiba executing the game plan to a T. Now we see who takes it, whose cuisine reigns supreme. Tetsujin Michiba no Kusaburo. It's the Iron Chef Michiba winning. Matsutake Mushrooms, Iron Chef taking it. Disappointment on the other side. No, Noda not winning, but yes, doing exactly what he came here to do, expressing the soul of Japanese food in his cooking and congratulating Michiba now. Came a long way. He can look back on this in LA, but the winner today from this side of the Pacific, Iron Chef Japanese, Roksaburo Michiba.